What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I have just finished my first year of UBC Engineering. It was definitely a very painful eight months, but after 14 midterms, 13 final exams, and countless hours of homework, me being here right now proves that you don't necessarily have to sell your soul in order to do decently well. Or at least that's what I tell myself. In this overly in-depth video, I will cover almost everything that you need to know before going into your first year. Starting with how UBC Engineering actually works, to all of the courses that you need to take, and finally some tips to help you survive through your first year. Small disclaimer here, anything referenced in this video is subject to change in the future, so just be prepared for that. Also, I was not in the pre-biomedical program, so I won't be covering any information specific to that program. And as always, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, we're going to start at the very beginning, basically assuming that you have no idea how the engineering program works at UBC. Here is a quick overview of your entire degree, and then we'll delve deeper into your first year. To start us off, first year UBC engineering is general. That means that everyone in first year engineering takes the same courses, with the exception of the people in the pre-biomedical program. Staying with me so far? All right, after completing your first year, you then apply to the engineering program of your choice using a ranking system from most preferred to least preferred. These engineering programs include disciplines like mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, civil, computer, and yeah, you get the point. The main thing that determines what program you get into is your average from your first year courses. The higher your average, the more likely it is that you'll get into one of your preferred programs. Then you get into a program and then you do co-op and then blah, yada, yada, yada. We'll, we'll get there when we get there, but let's focus on our first year first. First year UBC Engineering uses standard timetables or STTs to determine your schedules. When you do your course registration, there are around 60 different standard timetables, all with the core courses that you need to take in first year engineering. However, these standard timetables do not include your elective or your English credit which I will soon discuss when we talk about courses. For context, this is what my timetable looked like for first semester and second semester. Typically for first year engineering, you will take 13 courses totaling up to 37 credits, but you only need 27 credits to move on to second year. Now, the concept of course credits really confused me when I was first introduced to them, so let me do my best to simplify it for you. A good rule of thumb for most courses is that the number of credits the course is worth is equal to the number of hours of lectures in one week for that course. Let's take Physics 158 and Physics 170 as examples. Both of these courses are worth three credits which means that there should be around three hours of lectures each week. Physics 158 has two one and a half hour lectures each week, while Physics 170 has three one hour lectures per week. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule, but this rule of thumb holds true for most courses. All courses in first year engineering are worth three credits, except for your Physics 159 lab, which is worth one credit. Now we're going to talk about the courses that you'll be taking in your first year, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you skipped to this point in the video. I'll first talk about the core engineering courses taken in each semester, and then discuss your elective, English credit, and the courses that can be taken in either semester. I'll be giving short course descriptions for each of these courses, and in the future I'll be following up with videos explaining each course in more detail. Starting with semester one, we've got four courses that are specific to this semester. APSI 100, Math 100, Physics 157, and Chem 154. APSI 100 is an introduction to the engineering profession, where you'll learn about what it means to be an engineer, how to apply the engineering design process, and how to present your designs in different ways. 
At the start of the semester, you'll be randomly assigned to a group of five to six people and you'll be working with them for the whole semester. Every week, there are two one hour long lectures and a two hour long studio session where you work on your projects with your assigned group. In terms of workload, each week you'll be watching a couple of screencast videos that in introduce new engineering concepts, completing short quizzes for these screencasts, and then doing a weekly team quiz during your lecture with your group. There is one midterm exam worth 15% of your final grade and a final exam worth 30%. Next is Math 100, which is a course about differential calculus, covering concepts such as limits, derivatives, differential equations, and a small intro to multivariable functions. Each week, there is one two-hour-long large class lecture and a one-hour-long small class lecture. In terms of homework and assignments, you'll be using a site called Webwork to complete assignments and quizzes each week. The assignments have 20 questions in them and the quizzes have 5 questions in them. Additionally, there are 5 written assignments completed in groups that are due every 2 weeks. There are no midterms and your final exam is worth 50% of your final grade. Moving on to Physics 157, this is a course all about thermodynamics and waves, discussing concepts such as thermal expansion, thermodynamic processes, entropy, simple harmonic motion, and oscillations. Don't worry if you have no idea what any of that meant, it will all be taught very well in this course. Each week there are 3 hours of lectures and a tutorial session where you work on an assigned practice problem with a TA present. In terms of homework and assignments, you will have weekly pre-reading quizzes, tutorial worksheets, mastering physics homework, written homework, and weekly quizzes. I know that definitely does sound like a lot, but trust me, it is doable and will ultimately help you for the final exam. There are two midterms worth 13% each and a final exam that is worth 32%. And the last of the Semester 1 exclusive courses is Chem 154, which is a course that covers chemistry concepts such as chemical bonding, thermodynamics, and kinetics. Each week there are 3 hours of lectures and homework includes in-class worksheets and assignments on a site called Achieve. Additionally, there are quizzes posted every 2 weeks. Chem 154 also has an online lab component to it which alternates between pre-lab and post-lab activities each week. The lab component and your midterm exam are worth 15% each, and your final exam is worth 45%. Now we're on to the Semester 2 exclusive courses, which are APSI 101, Math 101, Math 152, Physics 158, and Physics 159. Starting with APSI 101, it has the exact same course structure as APSI 100, except with new engineering concepts, new assigned groups, and new projects. So if you want a recap of the course structure of APSI 100, go to this timestamp. This is the same case with Math 101. It has the exact same course structure as Math 100, except with integral calculus this time. You'll be covering concepts like the fundamental theorem of calculus, different integration methods, sequences in series, and different convergence tests. If you want a recap of the course structure, go back to this timestamp. Next is Math 152, which is an introduction to linear algebra. You'll be learning concepts like vectors, matrices, linear systems, complex numbers, and eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Each week, there are three hours of lectures and a one hour lab session on Zoom every two weeks. In terms of homework, you'll be using Webwork again for weekly assignments like you did in Math 100 and Math 101, but you'll also have MATLAB assignments due every two weeks. There are two midterm exams worth 15% each and a final exam worth 50%. Moving on to the infamous Physics 158, this is a course all about wave interference and electromagnetism, where you'll encounter topics like circuits, electric fields and forces, and magnetic fields and forces. Each week there are 3 hours of lectures and a tutorial session where you work through some questions with a TA present for participation. 
in terms of homework, there are reading quizzes to be completed before each lecture and mastering physics and written homework, which are alternated between each week. There are two midterm exams and one final exam. I will say that this course is probably one of the most prone to changes in the future, mostly because the physics department finally realized how badly this course was taught in the past. And the last of these semester two exclusive courses is Physics 159, which is a one credit lab course where you'll learn about how to develop measurement procedures with some applications to what's being taught in Physics 158. You'll have a three hour lab each week, and there are three one week labs followed by three two week labs. In these labs, you'll be given an objective like find the tension in this string and you'll need to use the tools at your disposal to test your ideas, experiment, and develop a procedure to accomplish this objective. All of that is recorded in your lab notes, which is submitted right before the end of your lab session and is the main thing that you'll be graded on for this course. Additionally, there are some short online pre-lab activities that are due before attending your lab session. And there is a final lab assessment worth 20% of your final grade. Now, there are a few extra courses that I haven't talked about yet because they are slightly special. Those being the semester swappable core engineering courses, your English credit, and your elective. Starting with the semester swappable courses, these are the core engineering courses that can be either taken in first semester or second semester, depending on which timetable you choose. One of these semester swappable courses is AppSci 160 which is an introduction to coding in the C programming language. In this course, you'll learn about the fundamentals of coding in C and how to program Arduino simulations in Tinkercad. And don't worry if you don't have any coding experience in the past, many people are able to do very well in this course without prior coding experience. Every week, there are three hours of lectures and a two hour lab session where you can go to get some help from TAs. In terms of workload, before each lecture, you'll have screencasts to watch with new content, eye clicker questions to answer during the lecture, and then a worksheet with coding practice problems to complete after the lecture. Additionally, there are bigger lab assignments with slightly more complex coding problems due each week. There are two midterms that are worth 30% in total, and a final exam that is worth 30% as well. To be honest, this course isn't as intensive compared to many of the other courses that I've mentioned so far, so it doesn't really matter which semester you take it in. Another one of these semester swappable courses is Physics 170, which is a course all about mechanics split into statics and dynamics. The concepts that will be covered include things like rigid body equilibrium, forces, moments, rectilinear and curvilinear motion, and relative motion. Each week, there are three hours of lectures and a one hour tutorial session where you work on and submit a practice problem by the end of class. Regarding homework, you really only have mastering engineering practice problems and the tutorial submissions due each week. There is one midterm worth 30% of your final grade and a final exam worth 60%. And for Physics 170, I highly recommend finding a timetable that offers Physics 170 in semester two, because it requires some knowledge from Math 152, which is only offered in the second semester. Now on to the non-engineering related courses, starting with your English credit. UBC Engineering requires that an English 112 or equivalent course must be taken in first year. And most likely it will be Words 150 for you. This is a course where you'll be exposed to the realm of academic and scholarly writing, analyzing different articles, writing your inferences on certain articles, and then writing your own literature reviews. Unfortunately, I can't go too in depth with the details of Words 150 because each professor structures their course a lot differently from each other. 
And the last of the courses that you may have to take in first year, depending on if you have AP or IB credits or not, is an elective from the Faculty of Arts. UBC Engineering requires us to complete six credits or typically two courses that fulfill the humanities and social science elective requirements. Now, I can't be the one to tell you which elective to choose, but I will put it out there that I took Econ 101, and I got a pretty good mark in that class, and it was somewhat enjoyable as well. Make sure to choose an elective that is the following. Somewhat easy, somewhat enjoyable, and will somewhat boost your average for second year placement. Oh wow, that was a lot of information just about courses, so let's round this video out with some general advice and survival tips for first year. From someone who definitely experienced all of the emotions that you would typically expect from a first year engineering student. First things first, your AP and IB credits don't mean sh**. And I mean it. As someone who felt really intimidated by hearing of people who took like eight AP courses in high school, I found out that it doesn't really mean anything in first year. Yeah, they may have like one to three less courses than you or have had a preview of what's being taught currently, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference in the long run. People who have taken AP or IB credits in high school are actually the minority rather than the majority in UBC engineering. So you don't really have to be worried if you haven't taken those classes. Second, and I know that this may not be possible for some people, but if you are able to, I would not recommend working a job while you're studying in first year engineering. Your first year is going to be a big increase in workload compared to high school. And you also want to get the highest average that you can to get into the engineering program of your choice in second year. But having a job does take up a lot of time away from your studies and could hurt you in the future. As someone who worked once a week as a swim instructor in the first semester, it took up a lot of my time that I could have spent studying for exams especially when I had to write report cards before my Math 100 final exam. I do recognize that this is not possible for some people, but if and only if it is economically feasible for you, I just wouldn't recommend working a job in first year engineering. Third, get your work done early, but not too early. Now, what do I mean by this? Time management, especially if you're a commuter student, is very important when you're studying engineering. You need to get into the habit of getting your work done relatively early and not leaving everything until right before the due date. Doing this opened up quite a lot of time for me to do other work or just for me to enjoy myself. That being said, you don't want to be the one to start assignments too early especially ones that are a lot more difficult or that require a group's input. Let's face it, many of your friends and groupmates will not have the same work ethic as you. And if you ever get stuck on something, you may have to wait quite a while until your friends can get to it. It does take some time, but try to find that sweet spot between getting your work done early, but not starting so early that you have to wait for others for their help. Fourth, and this one kind of ties in with the last point, is that time management actually matters. You may have been able to BS your way through high school, but for most people, that will not work in UBC engineering, unless you're like some child prodigy or something. You'll need to get into the habit of planning when you're going to complete certain tasks, how and when you're going to study for exams, and hopefully still find some time for a social life as well. And that last part actually does matter. First year engineering is an experience and you definitely want to have some good friends to share it with. Fifth, your work ethic will degrade as the year progresses. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, that's not gonna happen to me. Well, try saying that when it's like the month of March in your first year. At the beginning of each semester, you'll feel a jolt of motivation from the novelty of each course. But as each semester progresses, it is completely natural to lose your motivation to do your work at a high standard, and good enough becomes, well, good enough. And don't feel bad if you experience this, I did as well, and so did many of my friends. 
Speaking of friends, this ties into the next point, which is it is very easy to make friends and meet new people in UBC Engineering. So go do it. I highly suggest starting with the Jumpstart program, which is a program that runs the week before the term starts and helps introduce you to all that UBC and UBC Engineering has to offer and helps you make some friends as well. Also, because we use standard timetables in first year, there is bound to be at least a couple dozen other people with the exact same schedule as you. So those are also people that you can easily make friends with because you're always moving around together and you'll have the same courses. And you will definitely make friends through the insane amount of group work that is done in first year. Please, please, please don't use the excuse of I'm an introvert or I don't know if they'll like me or not. I'm an introvert as well and I kind of had these thoughts as well, but I was still able to meet so many amazing people because there is a lot of bonding that comes with suffering in engineering. And lastly, the final thing that I will leave you with is that feeling imposter syndrome is completely normal. Quite often you may think that you're not good enough for UBC engineering or that you don't belong or that just everyone is better than you. These feelings are completely normal and I assure you that you are not alone in feeling this. You don't have to be the best in your class to enjoy your time at UBC Engineering. Just look at the bigger picture for a second. You are in one of the top two engineering universities in Canada and in one of the top universities in the world. You have a ton of potential to do some amazing things and UBC Engineering is all about what you make of it. Well, that has been it for this insanely long video. I'm definitely gonna need some tea and honey after speaking for this long. I really hope this video can help some future first year engineering students out and bring some value out of my pain and suffering this past year. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to notify whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.